Howdy pilots, welcome back. Got another video for you this week before I tuck myself into my snug and awesome bed. Uh, so I've got the XP-50, we've got a BF-109F on our side, P-47B and Bowfighter on the enemy team. I wanted to show you the uh, the cheaper option for a U.S. Tier 6 Heavy, the uh, Wish.com version of a, a U.S. Tier 6 Heavy. Obviously, you know, not as good of a plane all around as a P-38L. And uh, I wanted to fly it in part because I've been debating whether or not I should buy the P-38L. I don't have it. I do like having a premium version of the uh, Tech Tree aircraft, of Iconic aircraft. Uh, for me, that's fun if I'm going to fly a plane that, you know, is, uh, has some historical background behind it. Um, a premium version of Extra Silver is great. This uh, bad boy is ugly. It does not have the graceful lines of the P-38 for sure. It does not have the armament of the P-38. Only a pair of 20 millimeter cannons and 50 cals in the nose. Uh, but it is a very decent heavy, I would say. Um, you know, the shortage here is the firepower, but that's true, or was true, at least in the origins of the game, of the U.S. line. The Achilles heel of, of the U.S. planes was lower firepower. Now, I'm not saying that was true historically in real life. I'm just saying in terms of the meta of the way um, Persia Studios set up the game, uh, U.S. planes were fairly good at everything except firepower. And so, you know, you had this plane uh, out before you even had U.S. heavies out. Um, and this was kind of the first, first one, the trainer that came out for it. So as you can see, all of the firepower is lacking compared to the P-38. It's not bad. You, you can burn through stuff pretty fast. And just to uh, test that assumption, we're going to go after a full B-17. It's a bot pilot, but it's 1,400 HP. And you can say we've, we've already whittled away a third of his HP, right? We are getting a little bit of help from behind us. Our P-17 is use, uh, using his AI turret gunners. Uh, it'll whittle away a little bit, but that's a you know that's a nose gun on a B-17. It's as you can see, it's not. Now that I'm out of the equation, it's not doing all that much. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and finish him off here, assuming I can get on target. And and one of the nice things about the XP-50 is it is a fairly maneuverable heavy, uh, sort of like the P-38L is. And uh, my recommendation would be if you have not flown heavies. You know, this is probably a good one to start with. Um, it's a little more forgiving in terms of, um, you know, what you can do with it uh, movement-wise. And as you can see, it, it allows you to get around. So we we defended the, the middle. Uh, we're able to take that and uh, kind of scoot it over immediately to this side zone. Uh, the BF-109F, I believe, was over here. Or was he in the mine? I think, actually, I think he dipped low to take care of some folks early on. I have to go back and check that. But... You know, we've defended, we've kind of cleared, the airfield is ours, the mining plant is ours, this garrison is ours, so we're up. And that's a good feeling. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go to the middle and define the, def, uh, defend the mining plant. You know, we're going to have um, bombers and ground attackers coming in. And, uh, you know, we know enemy aircraft-wise, there's a bow fighter and a P-47, which are essentially two multi-roles. So I'm not surprised, you know, if they want to take a crack at this area as well. So how does the XP-50 stack up against the P-38L? We're going to look at a comparison chart at the end of the game here, uh, just the one from the website, kind of look at them side by side. Uh, but uh, despite having smaller guns, a lot of the characteristics are very similar. So if you've got one of these in your hangar and you want to know how the P-38L flies, it flies pretty close to this. You've got similar roll rates. You've got similar turn times. Um, and so there's a little bit of that. I do think some of the unwritten characteristics on the XP-50 are a little better in terms of yaw rate, some of that kind of stuff, um, even though controllability stats are the same, uh, which is one of those hidden stats, but, uh, but it's still good. So uh, one of the things the XP-50 does have, and I'll show you this afterwards, it is, it is actually faster than the P-38L. I know that sounds crazy. Um, because the P-38L, you know, does very well, and and it's an up and down plane, same as this is. But um, you know, it's it's just got a, it's got a hair more speed. So if you set your XP-50 up for a speed build, there's the enemy P-47. He's going to get blasted by one of our bots before I can get down there. Um, and this is the other nice thing, by the way, is the the climb rate on this thing is not bad at all. Um, it also uh, climbs better than the P-38L. Um, but uh, but if you build this speed and the enemy P-38L on the other team is not built for speed, or if it's carrying ordnance, uh, bombs and rockets, you will be faster than it. And uh, it's the same amount of boost for both planes. Uh, so that's an intriguing thought, you know, if you, if you are not uh, someone who's going to pick up the P-38L, 
you know, which isn't a pretty hefty package. It's a $40 package for a tier six plane. And, you know, while well, you do get gold for some players, I don't know about you, but I've been doing this long enough, right? I've got most of the premiums you can buy with gold. I've bought them on sale from time to time. I've gotten enough crates, right? And I've got my premium socked away. So the reality is that gold doesn't really do a whole lot for me. I, I guess I should start buying gold premiums, uh, gold consumables at this point, to, to even the playing field. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm joking about that, by the way. But, you know, the gold isn't necessarily an enticing factor for the package. Uh, really, the enticing factor would be, uh, for me, would be uh, the plane itself. And so paying 40 bucks for a tier 6 premium is a little little wonky so that's one of the reasons i haven't pulled the trigger on it yet we'll see see how that goes uh, i got a couple of days to make up my mind here and same with a p61 which i have not done yet either so the enemy has managed to retake the middle i figured that would be the case at some point i you know wanted to come over here and help flip this one and the next goal is going to be to get that mining plant back and also to get one of the airfields back because that's a spell disaster for us honestly if the bots are spawning from both the airfields at the same time and we're down a zone, <clears throat> you know, and there's there's going to be, uh, um, obviously, that push. The mining plant throws in an extra 80 points. But I realize there's not much I can do over there. I did not bring ordnance on this. XP-50 does have four 100-pound bombs. Four or two, two 100-pound bombs, I think. So it's not much, and um, to me, it's, it's not really worth it. I'm not sure it can help you flip a zone all that much easier. So I did not put it on here, and especially now, you're, you're going to see P-38Ls in the meta, and so you want to retain that speed bonus over them, if at all possible. But right there is where you see the weakness, right? I did a nice pass on that lag. I had him dead to rights, but the guns were not quite good enough. And what I will say is the configuration you see me have here, I'm actually running long barrels, and uh, I think I would change that, uh, having thrown, flown uh, a couple of nights in this thing. Uh, at this point, I think I would go back and do gas-operated action. I was trying to squeeze a little bit of range out of the 50 cals uh, so that I could be hitting with them, but I don't think that serves this plane well. Uh, I think its best bet is going to be uh, you know, sticking with that gas-operated action to squeeze a little bit of extra DPS out of it. So that's, that's my next move there, and I would recommend that for you as well. Speaking of equipment slots, uh, the rest of them, of course, I've got gun sight at this tier. It's either gun sight or cockpit, and you know the cockpit really doesn't do this plane any favors. So, gun sight it is, um, and then um, also um, you know, put that I would put that towards probably the extra crit uh, from the 20 cals. Again, just trying to help help get things going there. And then uh, I, you know I've also got boost up on it. Um, again, we want to maximize that top speed, and the reality is with the dive, you know, the energy fighting you do in heavy planes. You know, you should be able to get that top speed and use that boost to really maintain it, uh, keep it up high there. So I'm trying to swim through and capture this zone, and I've made a grave mistake. Uh, this is the problem with playing late at night on a week when you're very tired, is you guys can see how much red is in the zone, can't you? And I'm trying to put away uh, one of the players here, since it is squall line, and I do that. But you guys have noticed the P-47 got on my tail, right? He flipped around and came after me. And unfortunately, Banshee is defending a zone. So uh, no offense to Banshee, but here's what you guys need to learn. My pro tip, player tip of the day. You see me pinging the map. Always be capping. Um, if, you are down, if you are down on zones, defending a zone doesn't help your team at all. Um, it will literally cost you the match, as it does in this case. Um, if you have less zones than the opponent, you need to be capping. You know, if you're up on zones and you feel comfortable with where you're at, defending a key zone like the mine, uh, mining plant in the middle of this map is not a bad move. But, you know, when you're down on zones like this, you know, kind of hopping around doesn't doesn't really get you very far. Uh, now, Banshee may not have, I don't know how many plane, you know, how many um, battles he has or anything like that. Um, you know, I can't tell you. He's, uh, it looks like a newer plane for him, only till, two kill marks on the tail, which means he's up to somewhere between 50 and 200 kills, if I remember those numbers right. Uh, and I play sad trombone at the end there. Because uh, it was. This was a game I thought we had, right? 724 at 800. And honestly, at the end of the day, I have to blame myself, too. I made a really poor decision going low in that zone. I should have swooped back up and carried on rather than uh, trying to come underneath and, and uh, get the, uh, the squall line kill on the bow fighter. So we both did well. And, and I will say the other team, team did decently as well. It's not like people weren't pulling their weight here. And, and even Banshee you know, put in a really good match. I think he had 11,000 personal points, something like that. So, you know, we did what we could. Um, we just didn't get enough, didn't get enough zones. Um, 
just didn't didn't quite happen for us. So maybe on the next one. But as you can see, you know, th this plane does uh, does chew some stuff up. I did 5,500 damage, uh, 23 crits, six assists. Um, so you know, it's it's not the P38L. The P38L is the better plane. That's that's the bottom line. It just is. Um, but you know, this that's my two points in this video, really, just to be clear. One, if you're not sure if you want the you know, P38L. If you have the XP15 in your hangar, fly it a couple of times because that'll give you an idea. It's going to be like this, but you know, with more firepower, which is not a bad thing. Um, you know, and and see what it's like. If you fly the XP15, you're like, man, this thing would be good if it had more guns. And the P38L is probably your 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 sauce. Um, if you fly this thing and you're like, nah, I'm not having fun with this, so then you probably shouldn't buy the P38L because it's more of the same, right? So. Anyway, great match on that. And here I want to look at the um, the comparisons with these guys. So you can see here, I've pulled it from the website. These are the three tier six US um, premium heavies. Um, two of them are, are gift aircraft, um, and one of them is an actual premium. The XP-50 is an actual premium. Um, you can't we don't know for sure. Let me just tell you, this is a conjecture that the people have made over the years. Uh, but the conjecture is, you know, the gift aircraft are ones that are not commonly available for the most part. But there, uh, also early on, um, there was a, a variation in um, kind of what those, you know, they were given out, right? The earliest gift planes were literally that. They were gift planes. And so there was always speculation and a little bit of research done, but nothing conclusive in the player base that premium planes have a higher credit multiplier than gift planes do. And I believe that's accurate. Now, I don't have solid proof for that. So, you know, again, um, I'm not trying to make that gospel truth, but I believe that's an accurate statement myself from my experience. So the Grumman XP-50, you know, uh, all things uh, equal, you know, both had 10,000 personal point matches or whatever, probably makes more silver. But the P-38L is a better aircraft, so um, that probably doesn't matter because a 10,000 point game in the XP-50 is probably a 12,000 point pl uh, game, if not more, in the P-38L. But anyway, here's the three planes side by side. Obviously, the Goose has the most guns in it. Um, and then the XP, excuse me, and then the Lightning, and then the XP. Um, and I've set these up without any ordnance. Of course, the Goose doesn't have any ordnance to put on anyway. You can also see the Grumman um, has uh, a little less hit points. Um, I think that was originally to balance out its uh, slightly better maneuverability for a heavy. Um, but where it makes for, for it is in that top speed at best altitude. And you guys can see it uh, in terms of the Goose. It's not even close. The XP-50 can run it down. Um, in terms of the P-38 Lightning, um, there's a little bit of a lead there, right? So um, one of the things that, that might make a difference, I don't want to say the XP-50 can run the Lightning down because of the difference in dive speeds, right? The Lightning in a full dive can reach a higher speed. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, the XP-50 actually climbs better than the Lightning as well. Um, and so there, there is a scenario in which a P-38 pilot, uh, particularly if they're carrying ordnance and, and not paying attention, maybe they're a little sleepy like I was at the end of that match, uh, the XP-50 could catch them. Um, but other than that, you know, most of this is, is pretty similar. You got roll rates that are the same, average turn times that are the same. Um, optimal air speed is a little higher for the other two. It just means at the end of the day, the XP-50 probably is a little more maneuverable, especially with a lower stall speed. Um, but, um, well, at least between the P-38L and the Grumman, obviously the Goose has a much, much slower or much uh, faster, excuse me, turn time. Um, and so you, didn't, you don't want to dogfight a Swiss Goose. Yeah, you probably don't want to be dogfighting in heavies, period, um, as I've said before. The Goose, you can get away with it. But um, I don't, it's still, even with a goose, I think I would stick to energy fighting, honestly. Uh, you're, you're, you know, use that altitude to your advantage because those are high altitudes, right? The only thing catching you at 2,000 meters is, um, you know, um, P-40s and, and BF-109s, really. So uh, I think the MiG, can the MiG line get up that high at Tier 6? I don't remember. I have to go look. But, uh, you know, bottom line, the XP-50 is not as good as the P-38L, but it's a fun plane. It definitely has its charms, um, and I've got one in the hangar, so the question I have to ask myself is, do I want to spend $40 for the P-38? I don't know. I've gone back and forth. I've gone back and forth. We'll find out. Uh, I did pick up uh, Millie and Elise 
and um, the Japanese pilot whose name just went out of my head um, to play around with. I'm, I'm not sure that's going to be a good move. Um, you know, they are, they do take some time and investment to really get them to a skill point level where they can, you can really shine with them. But I bought them. I'll give it a shot and we'll see what happens again. I like contributing a little bit. So I am in a position where I can do that financially. I know not everybody is, but I can and I do like the game. And so I would like to contribute to the coffers from time to time to make sure that uh, we're gaming sees fit to keep this running so uh thank you for your time tonight hope you enjoyed it if you got an xp50 pull it out have some fun with it uh you know throw a, put an ultimate speed build on it and put a could have put a, a good pilot in it and uh, go chase down some p38ls this weekend uh, and see what happens with that but um you know if not if you do want the p38l obviously it's a it's a good uh, very good tier six heavy and uh, i'm sure you would have fun flying it if that's what you want to pick up and run with so have a great weekend we do have some good missions up uh, some more experience so a good time to grind out those lines and and make transitions if you need them and I hope to see you in the skies. If you have any comments or questions, throw those down in uh, the boxes below. And uh, feel free to subscribe. And uh, look us up on Discord. Great community there. And I'm uh, happy to see you there as well. So until then, good luck and good hunting.